as you know our topic today is uh, anthropology uh, in practice as you know we are arranging this um, kind of a dialogue uh, it's it's the it's the eighth dialogue that we are having today uh, and one of the objectives of of doing this dialogue is to introduce and and give a, a kind of a um, introduction and orientation to our uh, colleagues and students about applied anthropology i mean you know this is you know this institute of anthropology was created in uh, 1997 in bangladesh to foster anthropological knowledge and ideas how we can popularize how can you we can apply it our apply our knowledge uh, for the um, betterment of the humankind so uh, as you know that anthropology is something that is everywhere i mean you know i will start this conversation with a quote from anthropology in action blog post where it, it says that the study of human life can happen anywhere mm -hmm. and there are opportunities for anthropological observation available all around us yes. and all the time so here comes you know uh, we, are, we are we are always into some anthropological endeavor i mean it's anthropology in the daily life mm -hmm. so uh, can we start from that uh, 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 that point that how do you see how anthropology works in everyday life uh, i totally agree with the quotation that you read because of course anthropology is the study of human beings and as human beings, of course, we have a lot of activities. We survive on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially now that we have this uh, global pandemic. So uh, while it is indeed true that many of the frontliners come from the medical sector, but they themselves realize that uh, part of the problem is behavioral, how uh, people... Uh, uh, contaminate one another, uh, spread the virus because of having close contact with one another. So here in the Philippines, for, for example, we have a very high incidence of uh, COVID-19 right now. We're still on lockdown, one of the longest lockdowns. We have been on lockdown since uh, the middle of March up to the present. And uh, the government is usually reprimanding people for going outside, not wearing their masks, not wearing face shields. But of course, they don't understand people's behavior. Uh, you cannot just tell them, don't do this, don't do that. You have to look at uh, where is their behavior coming from. And this is where applied anthropology comes in, how uh, anthropologists uh, can help uh, uh, agency workers, the government, the medical sector uh, in uh, addressing uh, social problems and global uh, pandemics. Uh, of course, uh, we have a lot of global problems. It's not just this pandemic. And anthropology will always have a say on how to deal with this uh, types of problems. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, I was just wondering that um, you have been you, you have been mostly uh, practicing, which is called quote unquote academic anthropology. I mean, you know, you have been a professor in the university for such a long time, and you have been you have been a vice chancellor in the highest position of the university decorum, and you have been dean and chair and everything. So, I mean, how did you? Uh, see that where is where is the i mean fine line of i mean doing it in an action rather than in 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 just academia i mean did you uh, of course you did some you know i mean during your works you did a lot of field works and mm -hmm. as 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 we know you have worked with different indigenous group mm -hmm. but during your even in the even in the structure of the university even in the academia yes. how you can apply your your I mean, ap applied anthropological kind of knowledge and theories and ideas into your academic thing. I mean, did you get my point? Yes, I, I did. Now, in, in many countries, uh, I'm not very familiar with the case of Bangladesh, but in many countries such as the United States, 
there is a divide. There are anthropologists that are uh, ac ac academics and anthropologists who are practicing anthropologists and they're not in the education sector. Uh, they could afford to do that because they have a lot of anthropologists. But here in the Philippines, uh, we, we are very few anthropologists. So usually uh, anthropologists, uh, some anthropologists who are in the academe also do applied anthropology. Uh, uh, some of them uh, during, during the semestral break or during, uh, here we have a Christmas break, uh, during the summer break, or you could go on leave from the university and uh, do practice. Uh, of course, our university, uh, we're quite fortunate enough that it encourages uh, academics to engage in, in practice. Uh, because uh, of course, there are three major functions of a university, teaching, research, and extension. So that falls within extension work, how to assess government, how to assess local communities. So it is encouraged by my university. And we have this uh, contract, it's called uh, uh, limited practice. Uh, okay. So we sign a contract with a university that we are allowed to engage in working, for example, for external companies, as long as it does not affect our teaching load. And personally, I appreciate it very much, this juggling between teaching and doing practice, because it helps me also in my teaching. Uh, so I'm not, not just teaching something theoretical, once I go back to my classes, I share to them about my experiences in the field, of course, doing practical anthropology, and the other way around, the theories that I've read, the theories that we have discussed in class, I could practice it when we go to the field. Uh, but of course, uh, there was a time when I was still not yet in the university, and of course, I was involved in non-governmental organizations and doing uh, uh, practicing anthropology. And uh, I, up to now, I do have some consultancy projects that are related to the field of applied anthropology. Okay. But, okay, not, so every, but not everyone in our university uh, does that. Uh, some just teach, others just uh, do research, uh, but for me, I try to balance the two. Okay, great. Uh, great, uh, Dr. Castro. So, I mean, uh, you see that uh, South Asia is a host of so many ethnic communities. You have, you have also, you yourself have done a lot of works, uh, even, even your field works in, uh, amongst the ethnic communities in, 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 in different parts of uh, South Asia, even, I mean, I mean, Asia. So in, in South Asia as well, I mean, in Bangladesh, for example, we have got a number of ethnic communities. I mean, it's, 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 it's about, uh, there are different, uh, I mean, opinion of the numbers, but it is almost uh, more than 80 ethnic groups in, in, in Bangladesh. So, I mean, how, how do you see that, you know, there is a tendency by the, um, by the uh, say international NGOs or or even by the local NGOs or development partners to modernize so-called development. I mean, and anthropologists are, are also a part of those kind of streams. And uh, but by training, they critique development and they know that development sometimes uh, does not really mean a kind of a development per se it's, it's it's sometimes it's another name of destruction as well so uh particularly when they are adopting different uh, projects and 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 development works um uh, for the develop in the name of development of the modernization of the ethnic groups i mean being an anthropologist isn't it very tricky to 
work because I mean, in 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 one hand, you have got that cultural relativism issue that you need to um, respect all those culture, and then there is a stream of those so-called development to modernize a lot of things. So, how do you? What is the? How do you deal with this? Uh, even within our discipline, anthropology, there's a debate on how uh, it should be done. So some purists uh, would say, no, don't intervene uh, in the way of life of people, leave them alone, leave them as they are, preserve their culture. So that's one extreme. The other extreme would be no, let's uh, intervene, let's modernize them, let us introduce government programs, let us introduce health programs, let us build roads. So that's, I think, for me, that's the other extreme. Uh, but uh, as to myself, I would put myself in between. Uh, I don't know if this is a good term, but we use the term uh, and the anthropologist as a cultural broker trying to uh, interface two worldviews, the worldview of the state or the international community and the worldview of the people. So they have different cultures, but the anthropologist is able to struggle these two cultures and translates, interprets to the other. So it's not a one-way communication. So what I do is, uh, for example, I was, uh, to, to be more concrete, let me give you uh, concrete projects where I was involved. I was involved in one geothermal exploration project in northern Philippines. And the geothermal energy is found in the ancestral domain of indigenous people. So, of course, uh, uh, before geologists could go to the area, uh, I briefed geologists on how to deal with the local culture in the area. What are the do's and don'ts? How to be sensitive about the culture of the people? So uh, that is one way of translating uh, the culture of the local people so that it will be understood by the, the corporate sector. But on the other hand, it's uh, not just this agency's understanding the local population. The local population should also be familiar about what this project is about. Like, for example, uh, in this geothermal exploration, there will be a lot of drilling and long pipelines, several kilometers long, will be built. And people will ask the geologists, if you do that, our rivers will become empty because the water will go in. And geologists were explaining, no, no, this is not the surface water. This is the underground water. But people could not understand that because uh, they don't have the technical know-how. So what I did is to translate this information materials into the local language, of course, with the support of uh, uh, those who are uh, knowledgeable about the local language, uh, doing uh, uh, cartoons as a part of uh, handouts, so that and then using metaphors from from the local community, such as the geothermal power. So of course the metaphor will be a cooking pot where you boil water and then steam com comes out. So the people can can appreciate it but of course the geologists once they speak they speak in a in first of all in english secondly in a very technical language so they are not able to express uh, uh what they want to convey in a language that is understandable to the community so uh, now uh, now going back to your question i think the bottom line will be that people have uh, informed choices and it is up to them to decide whether they will agree to it or not. We cannot impose on them, but, uh, but uh, it, it will be better for decision-making if they know 
the pros and the cons of certain uh, interventions. Okay. Okay. Great. So, um, but of I, course, I have... uh, for yeah. for uh, certain uh, uh, companies or agencies or even the government, of course, some of them don't like that. They would say, "Why do people have a choice?" This is for the benefit of the national community. So uh, this is well where the struggle comes in. I would tell uh, the government, yes, it's a good project, but please be patient uh, because the system of how people plan their way of uh, schedule is uh, more on a cyclical basis and decision-making is more consensual instead of just imposed by the the chiefs or the leaders right right absolutely so um i you don't know, castro there 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 are a couple of uh, popular area where uh, our um, graduates are being involved over the years uh, particularly it comes to uh, pro probably you have also done some of the areas where uh, which is quite uh, popular i mean cultural heritage management is mm -hmm. one Yes. And environmental uh, and, and social impact assessment is another. Yes. And the needs, needs assessment in different different uh, projects is, is probably another popular area. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are, uh, there are some areas called health and nutrition and others. Yes. Do, 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 you, uh, do you see some of the new areas where uh, in this time, uh, anthropologists can be engaged and at, at another uh, dialogue? Uh, with with James McDonald, one day we we had probably the um, applied anthropology dialogue five. We have been discussing that one of the biggest uh, um, job providers uh, in U.S. for the anthropologist is IBM mm -hmm. uh, for, for market research and and, and to understand the um, I mean uh, customer psychology and everything. So. Uh, where do you see the um, new areas of interest for the practicing anthropologist? Uh, I think what we will consider as new depends on a particular country. Uh, it has already been done in some places, but not done in others. So with regards to market research, uh, here in the Philippines, there are a lot of anthropologists that are being tapped because they pay well. Okay. <laughs> so for for students yeah. listening, uh, because if you work in a museum, you work in the university, uh, of course, uh, it's not as much as a private yeah. company uh, compensating True. people. So uh, that is why many of our graduates are attracted also in uh, going into market research or what we'll, we will even call as commercial anthropology. So. Uh, like uh, studying behavior of consumers is, is one. Uh, unlike uh, the traditional anthropologist that goes into the field and observes and participates in the daily life of people, systematically documenting what is going on and then making recommendations as how to do intervention programs. In uh, commercial anthropology, the anthropologist just watches uh, CCTV cameras okay. and then observes the behavior of people. So, for example, in the shopping mall, uh, what is the behavior of people? Uh, one of the findings, uh, of course, this is a very American finding, is that if women are asking the sales lady, uh, how much is this? How much is that? Uh, it doesn't really mean that she's going to buy. But okay. if, a, if a, a gentleman asks the sales lady, it is almost sure that he is interested in buying. Buy so the, okay. the, the, uh, because of course for women, uh, I hope I'm not stereotyping, they want to canvas first about the, the, the prices. But for men, they decide based on, do I want this? Do I need this? So they have already made up their minds. So the, the uh, guidance to sales ladies, if a gentleman asks uh, how much is the price, 
don't let him go <laughs> immediately uh, uh, tell him to, to buy that product uh, second okay. is uh, where do people uh, look at and uh, uh, here in the Philippines because we we drive on on the right side of the road uh, so uh, the tendency is to look at things that are on the right side instead of at the left yeah. side. So right. at, at the shopping mall, so you display items on the right side of, of the alley. And also uh, observing the eye level of consumers, uh, for example, in a toy shop. So the, the toy should be at the eye level of children who are going to tell their parents, mom, I want that, I want this. Okay. Uh, secondly, in advertisements, uh, here this is already being done in the Philippines. Uh, they have captured some behavior of uh, local behavior. I, it is very difficult to translate. Uh, some of them may not have scientific basis, but uh, for example, a type of shampoo and people believe ah this is good good to me my body will not reject it so we have a term for it in filipino language so some shampoo commercials use those terms and they are very powerful uh, for 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 consumers and they would tend to buy because of using this local uh uh, local concepts, yes, and terminologies. So anthropologists have been part of those types of uh, endeavor. Uh, however, uh, word of caution, uh, I think it should not be just these corporations using the anthropologists for their purpose. The anthropologists should also have a say within these corporations no, we don't do this. This is unethical. No, uh, we don't do that because that is sacred. So I, I still believe we are not that powerful yet. It is still these corporations that dictate the agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, another, another interesting thing when anthropologists need to do all the time, deal with, uh, they need to deal with rather, that the the, the uh, question of culture relativism mm -hmm. and say for example um say for in africa the, that uh, that um, um for example the sexual mutilation that happens uh, in in different countries in in, in africa that's uh, that's a tradition and but mm -hmm. that's extremely harmful uh, harmful for the women body so mm -hmm. uh, so i mean if you want to respect the uh, Kind of tradition, you need to be in support of the that sexual mutilation, but mm -hmm. as you know that that's 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 not good for health. I mean that's extremely bad for health. So, you know, and there are a lot of you know, for example, the the, the practices of PVAs sometimes uh, are, are quite traditional, and we need to respect that. But at some point, there are also uh, some harmful practices in in different societies. So, so if you are a trained anthropologist, you are taught. To promote uh, the cultural relativism issue, and then again, some something that is not that good for the community, uh, you need to go against that uh, uh, that tradition. So, how do how do you see that? Uh, I uh, again, uh, even among anthropologists, there will be a debate on this, and honestly, uh, uh, my attitude towards it has develop or has evolved in the past i was uh, just a promoter of cultural relativism period okay i remember there was a time i gave a uh, a lecture in uh, marawi this is in southern philippines it's an islamic city we have one islamic city in in mindanao island and this is marawi so uh okay uh, I had a project on uh, on uh, community-based monitoring uh, the situation of women and children. This is a UNICEF project, and those in the the seminar were um, um, Muslim women. 
Okay. So I was lecturing them about the need to respect uh, the local traditions, the local culture. Okay. But uh, I was surprised. Uh, during that time, I was surprised, but probably now I shouldn't be surprised. When the women themselves asked me a question, they told me, uh, but sir, do we have to respect our culture if our culture oppresses us women? And of course, uh, I, I was uh, being unfamiliar with uh, the local situation. I, I was, uh, I realized that there was a tension even within the local culture. So in the past, we have been romanticizing local communities as if their culture is homogeneous, that everyone believes in the same thing. But actually, in local uh, communities, there would be different uh, interest groups. Interests of women will be different from those of men, those of the political elite different from uh, the the, the ordinary people, uh, interests of the local government versus uh, the traditional leadership. So uh, there's a need for stakeholder mapping, what these different interest groups are, and look at where they clash, and how do we deal with uh, differences. So right now, my attitude is not uh, pure cultural relativism. Uh, of course, there's still the need to respect local culture, but uh, also listen to what people say, because uh, we know that in communities, there are cultural gatekeepers. Once we go there, there could be uh, local, the local elite, usually men, are the ones explaining to anthropologists, this is our culture, this is how we do it. But then we cannot access other segments of the community that have a different view. They would say, no, no, we want to change. We don't want to stick to that tradition. So um, I think uh, our role will be for these issues to come out, to surface, and uh, let them debate about it, let them decide. Of course, in a peaceful manner, not in a never in a violent manner. Uh, it may be uh, time consuming, uh, but uh, because if we just intervene, but without the acceptance of the local community, then the it intervention will also, yes, will also yeah. fail. Yeah, yeah, and 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 and, and the, the question of reflexibility comes in here, isn't it? I mean where the anthropologist is reflecting himself whether he what 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 he should or he she should do or not so yeah. that's that, that's all his work so and, uh, uh, usually yeah. it's it's difficult if you're just one anthropologist and you're trying to discern what should i do so it is always better that you work as a team but here in the philippines because as i mentioned there are very few anthropologists so usually the team is a social science team coming from different disciplines together with a sociologist, with an economist. Well, that I think that's good enough. And the other uh, team is the anthropological community because we have anthropological conferences. Uh, when, when in doubt about certain issues, bring up these issues in the bigger anthropology public that's why i like your <laughs> i like your uh, name anthropology public uh, so okay. that other uh, colleagues can give their opinion as well because you're not always right uh, listen as well to the views of other anthropologists right right absolutely thank you uh, so i have invited a couple of uh, real stakeholders today i mean uh, to to uh, engage with us who are uh, just uh, uh, graduated from the university and, and struggling for work and who have already uh, have joined some of the applied anthropological capacity and uh, so uh, and some are, are, are students who are opted for a for a career in anthropology so let's see how how they 
actually engage with us and then we'll get back to you again okay and uh, and 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 of course uh, uh, let me start with uh, a senior senior student who uh, just has uh, got his phd degree uh, from mahidol university thailand and uh, and he joined in a is an assistant scientist in a university uh, in a research capacity and also uh, as well as in the teaching capacity so uh while i was introducing him he, he just he was here and then i mean i i don't i don't see him he anymore <laughs> probably, probably uh probably will rejoin very soon and uh now i i would i would Shapon, are you i don't see you there so i i i actually um inviting uh, someone who is who has just joined in a capacity um and and he's a fresh graduate so shudipto are you there are you listening i yeah i'm listening have you have you heard uh, uh, a glimpse of conversation that we we, we have been we have been doing with uh, with last uh, couple of i mean 20 minutes so 30 uh, or half an hour yeah i have uh, no? joined late but uh, i have uh, heard the conversation okay. because uh, okay. uh, professor castro, hi professor castro how are you hello i'm good how about you okay so yeah i'm um, doing good so i was listening the about the unicef project you are uh, talking about so uh, that's the uh, from there i have just joined in this conversation so is there okay. any specific question for me no no i'm just wondering that here is professor uh, nestor castro who is a global expert on 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 i mean uh, both in academic and, and applied anthropology and and also um, i i'm i'm also here to uh, to know about the bangladeshi perspective what's going on there because i i'm i'm working in bangladesh and 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 and, and professor castro's work area is 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 is, is kind of widen he is like a, say, say for example he's a representative of asia and i'm a representative of this country so ask something that fit the, what you want to know about how you can uh, you can what is your what is there in your mind about applied anthropology how you want to put it okay uh, so uh, there are some uh, situation I, as i am a fresh graduate so there are some situation i have to face in my uh, work uh, workspace or uh, during my work in the office that uh, when we uh, switch into another discipline uh, uh, especially in the workplace so there is a, some uh, i think there is some problem in the bridging that when we think like an anthropologist uh, the critical thinking comes first but sometimes uh, when you work in another discipline uh, it's, it's what, like automatically what do, you, what, what do you mean by another discipline i mean uh, in a you, you mean a multidisciplinary engagement or you are totally different from anthropological essence i mean what do you mean by that no it's like uh, multidisciplinary uh, engagement or uh, uh, in a totally different uh, um, sector or different discipline so automatically the critical thinking process comes first but uh, in some case there is no need of critical thinking we can think like an in a uh, easy process or in a uh, simple process so uh, as an anthropologist or as a student of anthropology still i am learning uh, anthropology so how can i uh, come out from this because i want I, i've been trained like that to uh, think a uh, Situation or think a subject in a critical way from different perspective. Okay, so sometimes I feel like okay, I'm just uh, overthinking it or I'm analyzing the situation. It's like very critically. There is no need of this. So how can I overcome it as an uh, applied anthropologist? How can I overcome this? So this is a very personal question that I'm facing right at this moment as a student of anthropology or as a uh, practitioner. So this that's the question. Okay. And uh, Dr. you go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is quite difficult. But maybe I could uh, uh, cite my own uh, experience. I told you, um, maybe if you've heard it, that this is one of the first projects that I was involved in. 
It's called a community-based child monitoring system by UNICEF. Uh, when I was studying uh, in the university, one of my witnesses, <laughs> uh, now I'm telling this to pub in public, is in, in statistics. Because usually sociologists are very good in the quantitative method while anthropologists are good in the qualitative me method. Uh, that's the traditional divide. Uh, but when one of my first jobs, uh, this project is under the Philippine Statistics Authority because you have to measure uh, how many women are in poverty, how many children are malnourished. Uh, so that was my dilemma before. No, I wasn't trained for this. Now I'm handling this. But then I realized, probably because during my university days, uh, the, the st statistics that we were taught was not social statistics, but pure mathematics. Like if you throw a dice, what's the probability that you will get this number that I never appreciated. But when I was working, that was when I realized, now this is interesting because uh, it's not just uh, explaining. Media board. Yeah. It's just not mean media board. It's, it's more than that. Yes. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, what you're trying to say, uh, Mr. Sudita, is appreciate also the other disciplines because they have other ways also of doing things and uh, listen to them. And when it comes that to the time that they will also need your uh, interventions as to how anthropologists should do things, then you could share to them also how we do things. Yes, and, and, and you see, you don't have to forget about the critical thinking, as we have said that what, what I will do with that critical thinking, probably you need to adjust and adopt with the multidisciplinary uh, kind of a combination where uh, where your your supremacy of qualitative stuff can be I mean kind of a compromised with a lot of other other um, I mean kind of a components because uh, we have a kind of an ego as an anthropologist that we do uh, qualitative stuff so we are kind of better than the others like a thing I mean you know we have got the real truth I mean quote unquote uh, truth lies with the anthropologists, I mean, kind of an approach, but probably truth lies with everyone in their own languages. So, yeah. so we need to uh, we need to be a little adaptive, flexible uh, on that. But I, I would not uh, tell that you need to forget about the critical thinking because you can you can, you can utilize that it's at some point in your research. I am sure about that. If you just wait for some days, I mean, you know, just just if you want to, I mean, apply all of your uh, I mean, tools that you have you have been trained in the very first day, probably you will be in trouble. You just, you know, use your uh, <laughs> use your tools. I mean, one by one. I mean, probably you will you will get to use that at at, at some point. So, uh, thank you, Shudipto. It was uh, it was a very uh, nice uh, um, personal experience that you have shared. And I'll I'll just go to uh, uh, Mushid Hassan now. Uh, Mushid, uh, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, had, uh, I have Professor uh, Castro. Hello. Yeah. How are you? You see, you see Professor Castro, you are very popular in Bangladesh. I mean, everybody <laughs> knows you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I have some talk with uh, Professor Castro uh, and the Facebook and some comments and in, in my some status. And, <laughs> and, she, and, and he's very uh, nice guy and he always uh, inspired me for to do something better for the country and wow. for the world. Yeah. Well, thank wow, great. So thank you, Professor Castro. Yeah, great, uh, great to know that. I mean, uh, yeah. so, so, uh, so I had the, the nice discussion. Uh, uh, about that. No, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, uh, Mushid, if you have any, 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 any question that uh, that will give uh, Professor Castro and me a trouble. I mean, uh, I mean, if you have a troublesome <laughs> question or if you have just a simple yeah, question, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean yeah, feel free yeah, to ask some, anything. I mean, yeah, you feel free to ask anything uh, because I know you have a long journey of your uh, academic anthropology and then you have 
you're you're also practicing um i mean anthropologist for a long time so you have both you have a combination so what's your uh, what's your take uh, what's your uh, uh, asking point today do do, do you want to ask anything yeah, or it you, was a nice you, discussion you, you want to I give give us a pass <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I have, I have, I have one question, one, one concern about uh, the great concern is the the researcher from dis different dis discipline. They are uh, there is a great concern of uh, applying uh, quality uh, research. Uh, they are not the quality research is now it is not part of the anthropology, but uh, it's a part of other disciplines. The 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 scientists from other disciplines they are they want to uh, prefer quality research. So so this is the uh, good things for uh, for the, for as the anthropology that people are going concerned to practicing their quality research. So uh, so what what do you think, uh, Professor Castro? So what's the future of the quality research in to uh, to solve the problem in in the different uh, uh, the different world problems? And what's the uh, your thinking about that? We have to learn about the as anthropologists we have to learn the other methods from uh, from other disciplines yes um uh, of course uh, uh, first of all uh, good evening Murshid. Uh, nice to see you uh of course anthropologists do not have a monopoly on uh, or in the expertise of qualitative research uh, other other disciplines as well also engage in qualitative research. It may be done differently. Uh, for example, uh, usually in anthropologists would do a uh, long period of time engagement in a particular field area compared to other disciplines that do it more rapidly. So there would be some differences, but still, uh, it's not just the anthropologist that is familiar with how qualitative research is done. So we also learn from other disciplines. As a matter of fact, many methods also did not come from anthropology, like anthropologists do focus group discussions, but of course it came from market research and was borrowed into the discipline. So this is our way of improving our respective disciplines. We improve anthropology. They also improve uh, like sociology, geography, others also improve their own uh, disciplines by borrowing from anthropology. So there's a lot of sharing now uh, of uh, theories and methods among various disciplines. And this is something that I think is, is positive. Yeah, yeah, and and as as okay, I said, that, uh, nice as I said that uh, the the sole agency of the collective research, given, I mean, taken by the anthropologists, needs to be, I mean, shared with some some other uh, many co-workers. I mean, co-disciplines. So that yeah. that will that will I guess lessen some burden of of that anthropological uh, kind of a monarchy of collective research that have been claiming. Uh, by so many years, so we need to uh, we need to really really uh, be very particular about that, and and we need to also learn. Anthropologists have been criticized for being a lone rangers for so yeah. many years because they are they're the, they're the one who like to work uh, just uh, just alone. I mean, but we need to learn how to how to uh, co-work and how to co-facilitate and how to you know uh, be a good team member. So uh, that's uh, that's probably very important for a. Uh, uh, for an applied anthropologist. So thank you very much, uh, Murshid Chapan. Uh, we'll, we'll, we may get back to you again. So I, I now, thank you. Uh, oh, sir. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I now uh, invite Tasnima uh, Hawk uh, Mim. Tasnima, Tasnima Mim, are you there? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Michael, sir, are you? Uh, can you hear us? Yes, we. I can. Okay. Can you hear me? So, yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. So, what is your um, 
what is your kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> bullying that is coming to Professor Castro? I mean, do you want to have a Google googly or you just want to have a street ball <laughs> or what? <laughs> I have a particular, I have one particular question to ask. Can you tell me the basic difference uh, on anthropological research and uh, applied, yeah. anthropo ap applied anthropological research? Uh, so uh, general anthropological research versus applied anthropological research. Um, yes. Of course, uh, anthrop applied anthropology is part of uh, anthropology okay so it's a it's a it's it's a relationship something like uh, uh, in, in uh, for example I will use the metaphor in medicine uh, the the anthropologist will be the the uh, the doctor the general practitioner and the applied uh, anthropologist will be a surgeon uh, that's that really uh, does the operation. So uh, anthropological research may just be used to generate uh, basic knowledge, like understanding why humans do certain things. This is one of the goals of anthropology. We want to understand humanity. We want to understand why humans behave the way they do. So this could be done by an anthropological research. But if it is applied anthropology, it is not just for knowledge sake, but we want to study certain things so that we can apply it and do certain interventions, do certain programs for improving human the situation of humanity, such as how do we address global social problems? How do we deal with global pandemics? So these are the things that applied anthropologists will, will do. So the, the type of tools may be the same. So both will use key informant interviews. Both will use uh, focus group discussions. Both will use... Uh, uh, participant observation, but the ultimate goal of the applied anthropologist is I am using these tools for a practical use so that uh, uh, the, 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 the lives of the people are uplifted, for example. So that is where the difference will be. Uh, do you want to add something? Uh, Professor Mashar? No, I mean, yeah, this is that you, 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 you uh, elaborately uh, uh, narrated the whole thing. I mean, just, I just want to add one, one single thing. And when it is aimed at, aimed of doing something, uh, as you said, that to implement something or to complement something, or, you know, you know, we, we there is a new uh, version of research we call implementation research these days. Okay. okay. Where, uh, where they, they need to do some implementation project and anthropologists are engaged to, to help them implement, the, implement those. So that's also kind of applied research. And of course, we have got those traditional applied research where we work for the betterment of, uh, of the communities uh, and yeah. that mean yeah. to do something in, that will impact their life in a positive way. So that's, and, and, and your your general anthropological research may not do that that purpose it it may it may go for research for research sake it may go for making yes. grand theories it may go for i mean many other theoretical purposes i mean but it may be some exploratory research but but for if it is an applied research it it, it is aimed to do some uh some good for the for for the for the popular section of population so that's the mahawk Thank you so much for your uh, interesting question. I will uh, I'll I'll go to uh, Nahidul Islam Khan now. Nahid, do you have anything to say? Uh, you're uh, it's it's kind of muted. 
please unmute so it's if you need to unmute again yes can you hear yeah we we could hear you but again it probably it's a, it's just a just a volume problem can you just uh, do it again yeah we, we can we can hear the sound of your uh, sound of your computer okay i yes. just this the volume yeah yeah yeah, yeah we, we can, can hear you we can hear you now <clears throat> okay, I I want to just uh, actually I mean an undergraduate student, and uh, as an anthropologist anthropologist or la a learning student of anthropologist, we work with a different organization like you um, you are in UNICEF, but you, you have worked with UNICEF. So I'm actually volunteering with UNICEF from uh, last one year now, and we have recently did a project. Actually, it was a campaign on Global Hand Washing Day. You may have had um, <clears throat> so. I was working on a gypsy slum actually, you know, locally known as Bede. So uh, when I was working there, so I my job was to train children basically, their um, slum or slum or street children or che, I, slum like gypsy. So when I went there, I was training and I kind of um, uh, in front of a situation like, well, I was training the children but uh, the older generation who were uh, their parents they wanted that okay can you give us some uh, more hand sanitizer or can you give us some masks which which uh, unicef strictly strictly <laughs> prohibited to do and uh, didn't give us enough fund actually to do that so i wanted to know while applying I mean, facing this kind of situation and uh, again uh, in anthro applying anthropological anthropological knowledge how can we act act in this kind of situation um of course uh i'm not very familiar with the exact situation that you are in but i think uh, what you experience really happens when when the anthropologist goes into the field that there is a lot of expectations by the community of what you should do and but but you have another agenda so you don't really don't really meet. Uh, this is a common dilemma by anthropologists that once you go to a community, the people look at you as if you're you're the savior. <laughs> they they expect a lot from you. Can you give us this? Can you give us that? Uh, so I think um, one way of uh, dealing with it is at the very start uh, when when we. Uh, go to a particular village or community or a slum area for example uh, there is a dialogue between the anthropologists and the community something like expectation setting uh, we are here because this is what we want to do uh, what do you think about it uh, what are your expectations from us and then the community also will say uh, what they expect and where they can intervene and find ways where you could work together. Because if that is not very clear from the start, people will really ask for certain things that are not within your mandate. Uh, it is beyond what UNICEF is doing. It is not my role. Uh, so uh, uh, this expectation setting is very important. But of course, there should be compromises as well. <laughs> because people will say, it's unfair. It's just you getting something and we don't get something in return. Uh, so we should also reflect on uh, it may be beyond of what I am supposed to do. But doing this will establish more rapport with me, with the, with the children or with the community members. Uh, so try to do some balancing act as well. Well, thank you, Nestro. Yeah, uh, great. Um, uh, so I'll I'll give uh, Shujan a chance now. Shujan, do you want to say anything? You want to anything? You want to say anything, Shujan? Okay. 
please go ahead. I want to ask a question after a few minutes. Please go ahead. After a few minutes, the two minutes. Oh, after after, after a few minutes. Not connecting so good. Okay, okay. okay. After after a few minutes. Okay, we we understand that very well. So um. And after a few minutes. Okay. Okay, so uh, so I'm I'm getting back to Ifat now. Ifat, do you have anything to add? Okay, uh, actually this was a really a nice dialogue. Uh, I was really enjoying, and, and I was very much fascinated about the you know the new opportunity in the commercial sector. So I think uh, in future Bangladesh will you know quite many uh, anthropology students more students into the commercial sector as well. So uh, a very um, common question for now in the pandemic. So uh, I, I need to ask uh, Dr. Castro that what will be the role of anthropologists in this pandemic situation, especially in the, in the Asian country? Okay, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, COVID-19 is just not just a virus but there is a behavioral component uh, attached with it. So you, you don't just uh, get the virus, but you get the virus because of certain behavior that you do, like being in close contact with people who may be asymptomatic. They don't show the signs that they have this uh, virus. Uh, uh, not washing hands, which is a behavioral problem uh, uh because we should be doing it but some people don't uh, uh what else uh always touching your face for example you touch something and now you touch your face so uh the question will be now how do we change the behavior of people in the meantime now that the pandemic is here uh, i'm not too sure about the future do we return to the old ways uh, let me give you an example in the Philippine setting because, of course, uh, I'm not so familiar with uh, Bangladesh. In, in the Philippines, when we meet older people, like the generation of parents and grandparents, uh, as a sign of respect, we hold their hand and put it on top of the, the forehead. This is to show the respect. But by touching the hands of others and putting on it on your forehead, then you may be contaminated with a virus, especially for elders that you don't know. Because you don't just do that to your grandparents, but also to people of authority. Okay? So that is very traditional. But within now that we have this pandemic, we should suspend this type of behavior so uh so i think in in the west they do uh, shaking of hands but but uh, that is discouraged right now of course people may say especially the those from the older generation they will say no you're not respectful why are you not doing that to me but you have to explain it so it's really a challenge because we know that culture is something that we inherited for a very long time. So uh, we have to change at least for the meantime. Until there is no vaccine yet, we have to change our behavior. And anthropologists uh, play an important role in studying what types of behavior may uh, uh, may uh, be the ones that are part of how people get afflicted and how this may be changed, what will be the alternative type, types of behavior. Because admittedly, many, many from the technical field, uh, they belittle culture. They will say, oh, I, I will just enact a law and people will follow. But it's not true. People don't follow. So here in the Philippines, we have a law. We have certain laws that uh, children should not go out because it's dangerous. Uh, the, those 
six to five years old and below should not go out because they are in danger. But still, people go out because they don't want to stay at home. So uh, the anthropologists may look for ways as to how do we address these types of problem. Uh, we we should find out why people go out. Uh, like they first of all, their homes are very small, so they easily get bored in very small homes. So is it better to put them in? in a uh, like in a gymnasium I, I really don't know but but uh, the study should be done and the intervention should be based on empirical studies uh, but of course this should be done quickly because the danger is already there so uh, these are uh, I think uh, the advantages of uh, the anthropologists in uh, studying uh, culture, tradition, and behavior. Thank you so much. I was wondering that uh, I see that anthropologists are remaining very silent in this situation, but uh, I, I really feel, uh, you know, very sorry for them because this is the time that they can they can play a very, very, very important role in this situation to handle or because they have the technique, you know, to mix with the people to learn their uh, you know the culture so i was i was really wondering so why they are remaining silent <laughs> uh, i'm not too sure whether they are silent i think yes uh, some anthropologists are silent because even they are uh, overwhelmed with the problem that we have so th there are some anthropologists who are like that but there are uh, at least in the philippine case there are anthropologists who are speaking and sharing their thoughts about what should be done. But the other problem is, the other end is not listening. <laughs> because uh, many, many uh, people in government especially, they think they know everything. Uh, oh, we have a solution for that. We don't have to listen to people such as professors. They're only good in teaching, but... Uh, what do they know? So uh, this is another type of behavior that we should change. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same goes. Uh, same goes to to many of the countries uh, as well. I mean, that's that's the same thing. And and but but despite them um, having saying that, uh, anthropologists are 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 taking some roles. Particularly, we see in in in, in Ebola cases where. Uh, uh, in 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 the anthropologists played a very a very uh, important role, uh, and 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 I'm sure the Hawaiian narratives uh, will come after this pandemic. We'll find some role of anthropologists in different parts of the world. But and uh, but but of course uh, there is no denying the fact we need to be more more vocal and more uh, I mean contributory uh, from uh, from a perspective of anthropology. So uh, it, it is so nice. Uh, uh, Professor Castro, to have you uh, tonight. I, I know it's, it's quite a late uh, in, in Manila, but I think I really sincerely appreciate your time and, and your participation in this dialogue. And we wish you a very good health and this uh, stay safe. And we will be in touch. And, and let's uh, let's bring some uh, some new ideas and thoughts in 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 naked anthropology uh, with your leadership. Thank you very much. I also. Uh, appreciate uh, the discussions that we had. Uh, we, I could listen to what young people are thinking right now. Uh, what are their problems, especially with their careers? So we we should encourage encourage these types of dialogue. Uh, I know you've been doing it uh, in Bangladesh uh, through your organization and institution. Uh, we should broaden it. We should also do it here in the Philippines and also engage uh, with other anthropologists from other countries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kester. Uh, good night. Good night. Thank you very much.